All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our RBT exam practice series where we're going through a nearly set of questions together and breaking them down. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like and subscribe. Check out btexamreview.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. You're waiting for a bus at a bus stop. You check your watch every few minutes, but the time between bus arrivals is unpredictable. Sometimes a bus comes in five minutes, other times it takes 20 minutes. Your behavior of checking your watch is most likely being maintained by what schedule of reinforcement? So we have schedules of reinforcement questions where you're going to have to identify when is your behavior receiving reinforcement. The whole, whole idea of a schedule of reinforcement is to tell us when reinforcement is delivered. Now, when deciding, you wanna break schedules into two parts. You wanna think about, is my schedule fixed or variable? And is my schedule a ratio or an interval? If it's fixed, it means it's not changing. If it's variable, it's going to be on an average or is changing. And then ratio has to do with responses. Intervals have to do with time. So let's start with ratio versus interval. Is your behavior maintained by your responses or an amount of time? Well, you're checking your watch every few minutes, but the bus is gonna come after five minutes or sometimes 20 minutes or sometimes in between, no matter how many times you check your watch. So the reinforcement is based on an amount of time. So this is going to be an interval schedule. Now, is the schedule fixed, meaning it's the same every time, or is it variable, is it changing? Well, it's variable. Sometimes it comes after five minutes. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes. So we have a changing amount of time, which is going to be what? It's going to be a variable interval. If you get stuck on a schedule of reinforcement question, break it into two parts and handle each one separately. You're trying to open a jar of pickles, but the lid is stuck. You twist it harder and harder multiple times, but it doesn't budge. After several unsuccessful attempts, you eventually give up trying to open it yourself. You no longer trying to open a jar is an example of behavior change due to what? So we have a behavior change question. And with behavior change questions, first thing you ask yourself is, has my behavior decreased or increased? Assuming it changed. In this case, you no longer try to open the jar. So you're no longer trying to open the jar. Has the behavior increased or decreased? Well, it's decreased, it's stopped. So if the behaviors decrease or stop, we know we're looking at punishment or extinction because reinforcement only increases. Now you're trying to open this jar, but the lid is stuck. So you start twisting harder and harder and harder, but it doesn't budge. You do this multiple times. What does this look like? What intervention causes someone to engage in the behavior at a more frequent rate or at a higher intensity until they finally stop? Well, to me, this looks like an extinction burst. Previously, when you try to turn the lid on the jar of pickles or a jar, it opens and you get reinforced. Today, you can't open the lid, so you're no longer receiving the reinforcement. The reinforcement is being withheld. Your behavior is being put on extinction. If you look at A and B, positive and negative punishment, yes, the behavior decreased, but positive and negative implies something was added or taken away. Nothing's being added or taken away. The lid is just stuck. It's not moving. Your reinforcement is being withheld. And that's what makes this extinction instead of punishment. It's the hardest part about punishment and extinction is understanding the difference between the two. And then D, response cost. Response cost is a punishment procedure where we are removing reinforcement based on behavior. That's not what's happening here. All that's happening here is your previously reinforced behavior of opening the jar by turning the lid is no longer receiving reinforcement. The lid remains stuck. Your behavior change is due to extinction. A therapist is teaching a young child to tie their shoes. Initially, the therapist guides the child's hands through every step. As the child begins to grasp the sequence, the therapist gradually reduces the amount of physical assistance, eventually just pointing to the laces and then just saying, tie your shoes. This systematic process by the therapist is known as what? 
So we're looking at the process by the therapist. Well, what is the therapist doing? A the therapist is teaching someone to tie their shoes. They start by guiding the child's hands through every step. So it looks like a physical prompt. Then as the child learns, the therapist produces physical prompts and uses some gestures by pointing to the laces. And then they go to just a verbal tie your shoes or maybe tie your shoes is the discriminative stimulus. Either way, what has the therapist done? Well, they've reduced the prompts from physical to most intrusive to very, very unintrusive. And that process is called what? A fading. Yes, prompt fading, stimulus fading. This is what is happening. We're fading out that prompt in order to transfer control to the SD of tie your shoes or just the shoes themselves. This is also most to least prompting because we started with physical and gone all the way down to these gestures and verbal prompts. Why is it not B-shaping? With shaping, we're reinforcing approximations of behavior. We're not focused on the reinforcement here. We're focused on the prompting. C, chaining. They might have used a chain to teach shoe tying, but there's no indication of what that chain would be, so chaining is out. And then D, discrimination training. With discrimination training, we are teaching the skill of discrimination, the ability to identify between two different stimuli. We're teaching one singular behavior here, tie shoes. And we're doing that through prompting, specifically through most to least, or prompt fading or stimulus fading. Tom, a behavior technician, is working with the client who suddenly engages in severe self-injury. This is not part of the initial assessment or part of the behavior plan. What is the most appropriate action for Tom to take first? So we're looking for the most appropriate action for Tom to take first. Now, what has happened here? This is an ethical question or a implementation question. Tom has a client who engages in this new behavior. Now, in this case, it's severe self-injury, so it's... it's potentially an emergency, emergency situation, a crisis situation. But this goes for any new behavior, right? This, this could be just swiping materials, screaming, crying. The point is the behavior was not part of the initial assessment or part of the behavior plan. If you find yourself in a situation where a new behavior is occurring, especially a severe, dangerous behavior, what's the most appropriate action to take first? A, implement a new punishment procedure they learned about in a workshop. We're not gonna start picking and choosing consequences in the moment, especially a punishment procedure. Tom has no idea how the client is going to react to a punishment consequence in this scenario. So A is definitely something we wanna avoid. B, continue with the planned session, documenting the behavior later. Well, no, we've got to address the severe self-injury. This is a, a major deal. We can't just ignore it and keep on going through session. C, ensure the client's safety. Yes, above all else, our goal is to do no harm. And so if we have new behaviors, especially severe, crisis, dangerous behaviors, we have to ensure the client's safety first. And that means you may be inadvertently reinforcing something. We'll deal with that later. We've got to keep this client safe, above all else. D, ask the client why they are engaging in the behavior. You can try that, but they could be non-verbal, they could be non-vocal, they could be to stimulate or escalated. A million reasons why D just doesn't make a ton of sense given this scenario. Most appropriate action, new behaviors, especially severe behaviors, ensure the client's safety. At a grocery store, a child reaches for cereal on a high shelf. The caregiver waits. The child then says help and the caregiver hands over the box. What type of instructional strategy does this interaction represent? Let's think about our two types of instructional strategies. Typically, we're going to be looking at discrete trial teaching or training, which is table-based, it's very systematic, or naturalistic teaching, which is using the environment and naturally occurring scenarios to teach. In this case, in a grocery store, a child reaches for, high, for cereal on a high shelf. The caregiver responds by waiting. When the child says help, the caregiver hands over the box. What is the caregiver teaching? It's teaching the child to say help. It's teaching functional communication. Using this naturally occurring situation 
of the child reaching for cereal in a grocery store. So what type of strategy does that represent? A, discrete trial training. With discrete trial training, we're gonna have a clear beginning and end, a clear antecedent that we arranged, a clear behavior, a clear consequence that we arranged, and a pause. In this case, it doesn't appear to be DTT. It appears this child was in the store, engaged in reaching for cereal, the caregiver responded. So the strategy used is gonna be B, natural environment training, or C, incidental teaching. Incidental teaching is the same thing as naturalistic teaching, using an incident to teach. So this type of instructional strategy is represented by both B and C, natural environment training and incidental teaching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to ABA Exam Review on YouTube. Check out btexamreview.com. When you pass your exam, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.